Hi everyone, it's Nishti here and I'm really pleased because today I'm interviewing this little girl. Well, she's nine years of age. Her name is Talia and she's got milk allergy and her mom, Julia, is here as well. Now we met on Instagram uh, and they've decided to, um, for me to interview them today because it's a very fascinating story that they both have to share with us today. So uh, hi, Julia and hi, Talia. Hi. How are you doing? Good, Good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. You look lovely, Talia. Thank you. So um, I'm really pleased, uh, Julia, that we uh, we connected on Instagram. You know, that's the beauty yeah. of social media because I uh, I think you commented on one of my posts about eczema. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. And yeah. That's yeah. how we uh, we started to chat. So I'm very curious, and I know the audience will be very curious to hear more about um, your story because I think it's going to inspire someone out there watching this video who has a child where you uh, might be thinking your child has an allergy but you haven't got it diagnosed yet. This story is really going to um, inspire you. So go ahead, um, Julian, when you're ready and, and talk to me about your story. Okay. Um, well, when Tali was born, I didn't get any of my own milk. So they, in the hospital, they put a straight on cow's milk formula, um, which was okay at first until she was about four weeks old. She started to develop eczema, mostly on her face. Um, but it used to be quite red and flared. We would go to the doctors. The doctor eventually sent us to a dermatologist who prescribed a few different steroid creams and soaps and body creams and to just sort of treat the skin, but uh, it didn't really improve a lot. So we wanted to deal with the reason why she was getting the eczema. Um, so I did some research online, tried to figure out what could be causing it. And obviously at the time, all she was having, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ingesting was cow's milk. There wasn't any other foods yeah. to eliminate. So um, I spoke with the health visitor at a baby massage class who suggested that we try it for two weeks on soy, pro, uh, soy formula and then let the doctor know how it went. And his skin did improve after the two weeks on the soy formula. So we then got referred to pediatricians and dietitians and took it from there. So it took you a long time. So first you were giving lots of creams to sort of mask the symptoms. Yeah. Which unfortunately we see a lot of. So they yeah. weren't, weren't treating the cause of because no. obviously a flare up in, in her skin was a sign that something wasn't right. Yeah. So did it on all on your own initiative, which is amazing. And how old was Talia? Um it was she was born in the July and it was by the October that we started to investigate whether it was the dairy allergy or not. She started to get the eczema after when she was about four weeks old. Okay, and did she have any other symptoms than eczema? Uh, she used to have, she didn't, she wasn't colic or anything, but she did used to have very uh, loose stools and um, stomach aches. She would either be constipated and need a lot of massage on her stomach to get her moving, or it would be completely loose. It was, there was no sort of middle ground. Yeah. Um, and as we were weaning her, and we, I was still learning about the allergy and things that contained food milks in because it's hidden in everything yeah if she had certain things she would wriggle in a high chair almost immediately you know sort of it was the yeah. itch yeah was she arching her back as well was she arching her back yeah. yeah yeah and she would you know we would put on the hand mitts and swaddle her really tight to try not to get her to scratch but she still used to manage to get her arm right through out through the neck and scratch and scratch her skin oh. so you know how uncomfortable it must have been for her yeah so I often say when I have uh, uh, children with eczema I immediately think cows with a protein allergy now some people yeah. out there may not agree but uh, it just works every time and often children with eczema have a very very low uh, tolerance level to dairy which we will talk about because actually you have a very low tolerance level to dairy um, because cows with a protein allergy because really that's what you had or that's what you still have but well, we just yeah. call it something else now, don't we? And um, with protein allergy can present in various forms. And I've seen it present in the form of obviously eczema, reflux, vomiting. These are well-known um, and well-accepted um, symptoms. Uh, colic, 
um, uh, constipation, diarrhea, but I've also seen all the children, once they've gone back on dairy, that they don't sleep well. So, you know, and that we can't really scientifically prove, you know, that dairy, yeah. not having dairy helps you to sleep better. So um, what I'm trying to say is that it's, the symptoms are vast, but eczema yeah. is such a clear cut. So uh, it's, it's, it's very upsetting that you had to go that long to get her sorted. But actually, you were very proactive, didn't you? You yeah. went out there. You could have, because you had, to, you may have had to wait longer if you didn't. Yeah. It's, it's hard to see your, your tiny baby so distressed and uncomfortable, isn't it? So it's trying to figure out ways to stop that. Yeah. yeah. And luckily, we have the internet now. <laughs> yeah, we are very lucky because there's so much information on the internet. Um, and obviously, you did the right thing by putting on a dairy free formula. Um, yeah. But what really she should have gone on to was one that we prescribe as dietitians or even a doctor can prescribe it. But because you weren't referred to the appropriate service, you had to yeah. go on a soya formula. And we don't prescribe soya formula to a child unless they're above six months of age. Right. You, you, what else were you going to do? You were there, yeah. you had a crying baby, eczema, scratching their face. So, you know, you did, you did what a mother, a mother would do is to yeah. find a solution here and now. <laughs> um, so, so Talia, you are now nine years of age, right? Um, and you still don't have any dairy in your diet. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us a bit more, because obviously when a child hits one, we expect them to have grown out of their allergy. So we um, reintroduce dairy back in the diet through the milk ladder. So uh, that's something obviously you won't be able to remember, but I'm sure your mom remembers. Did you start to reintroduce dairy um, into Talia's diet? And if yes, what happened? Um, we tried a few different times. We've tried over the years. When she was about two, we weren't actually told properly about the ladder. We were just advised by the paediatrician at the hospital to try a little bit of cooked milk. And oh, did you see a dietitian early on? Not at first. It was just a paediatrician at first. Um, and they told they didn't actually tell us about the ladder. So they told us, try, try a little tiny bit of milk on its tongue, straight from cow's milk from the bottle, and then try it cooked, and then build it up. Uh, when she was about two, she went through about a month and a half where she could tolerate it, but we didn't. I didn't know how to could what the sort of level was, so I just sort of we were excited. I let her try pizza, I let her try ice cream, I let her try everything, and after about a month and a half, it totally overloads the system, and she reacted again. After that, once we saw a dietitian and learned about the, the ladder properly, and we started from a malted milk. I think about three years ago, we got to half a malted milk every day. And then she ate something else and reacted. So the dietitian said, leave it for six months before you try again. And then now, every time we try, we can't get past a crumb. After a week of having a crumb, she'll begin to react to show symptoms. And it's the eczema that comes back. It comes like, it, it comes into hives first, little tiny hives. Um, and then almost like eczema but uh, the last time it came under her arms and across her neck and chest wow okay um so again it, it shows it's very clear that you have a very low tolerance level to dairy and it's the right thing is to actually reintroduce dairy as you do but i also believe that a time comes because the amount of of people i see who push the dairy and they push it and they push it despite the child having reactions, I see so many of those. And I always say, okay, let's just take a pause and let's respect the fact that everyone's different and everyone's tolerance to dairy is different. And obviously yours, Talia, is very low. Mm -hmm. um, now you haven't known anything else. You, you are, you've always known to be dairy free. So how are you managing your allergy? on a daily basis? Well, um, sometimes when my friends like just knew that I had a dairy allergy, they would have just thought I didn't like any from milking. So they would have just said to me, well, you can have this anyway, even if you don't like it. 
but um, if they brought something in. But I'd just say I'm allergic to it, so I can't actually have anything with it in. And some people are really good with it, because when I went on a cruise ship, I had my own private chef, and they got me all dairy-free food. Oh, fantastic. VIP. 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 That was the time she actually said, I'm so glad I've got an allergy. Yes. So you, yeah. I know, because we've been talking for a while, I know you're managing your allergy very well and you're very aware that you what you can and cannot eat, which is amazing for someone your age. So that's very, very good. Now, um, it's also important to talk about, because uh, we, because Talia, before we recorded this um, video, she, she told me, you know, why does someone have a dairy uh, allergy and why does someone not? Uh, and obviously we are all different, right? So some people have an allergy to egg and some people have allergy to nuts. Sometimes we say it's uh, genetic. So I know, is there a family member with um, milk allergy? Yeah, my brother has a, he's anaphylactic, a severe milk allergy. Yeah, so that again shows that there's a genetic component there. Yeah. But also, and we talked about now, I'm very um, keen to, to look at, when I have a client in front of me, is to look at where they're from in the world, uh, hereditary-wise. And uh, obviously, Talia, you have um, some genes from the Caribbean, right? So is it Jamaica? Yeah. Yes, yes. So I always say, um, you know, if you think about it, in Jamaica, they don't have Weetabix with cow's milk for breakfast. They don't have cheese sandwiches and yogurts. They have, their diet is very much dairy-free right? And they have a lot of wheat-free products as well. So I see a lot of children like yourself who struggle with their skin. And often it's dairy and wheat that I tend to try and eliminate. And, um, you know, I have story after story where actually we can use food as medicine to try and treat these symptoms. So that just shows that from an hereditary point of view, looking at where you're from, at that part of the world, people don't eat dairy to the extent that we do here right so i i very much believe that um we cannot underestimate our roots and looking at that as well does that make sense right talia yeah good good so um now talia has i'm just looking through some of my questions talia has actually done uh, clips of her meals her dairy free and healthy meals which um, towards the end of this interview I will uh, redirect you to a video where she shows you all her meals which is an amazing video right it's going to inspire other children your age who are also struggling with an allergy right because you've really embraced it you're so confident and you just get on with it which is amazing um, uh, so towards the end of this video you will we'll show you the link to that now I want to, because Julia, you asked a great question about, you know, lactose and, you know, lactose and dairy-free, lactose-free and dairy-free. Because um, I know you tried some lactose-free products. Is that correct? Earlier, earlier on, she, um, she, we tried a few lactose-free, but she did still react to that. Yes, yes. And you mm -hmm. asked me, what does that, what does that you know, why does she react to that? Because you know, it's lactose free. So I want to just um, specify this to our viewers out there that lactose free products, in my opinion, are a waste of time. The reason for that is because lactose free products still have the, the cow's milk protein in. So they have taken out the lactose, which is the sugar, but it still has the protein in. That's why lactose free. Uh, you know, cheese and milk and these things still have the protein in. So I don't really understand what the point is. Yeah. Because if you can't tolerate dairy, it's most likely the protein in the dairy that is the problem because it's intended for a calf. So it's this big, whereas human protein is this tiny. And that's the problem. Right. So when you were when your mom was reintroducing dairy in your diet and you were fine and then you were OK. And but then you were not fine. That's because the protein had been was building up in your body. Right. So it was building up. And at one point you just went, I can't do this anymore. Right. So because you're nine and you're still very allergic to milk, 
I predict that it's probably going to be lifelong. Yeah, but we are very fortunate. We have so many products out there that are dairy free. We are very lucky, aren't we? Um, and most people I see worry about calcium. But do we need to worry about calcium, you think? What, do, what does calcium do? Does it give you vitamins? So calcium is a, is a nutrient, yeah, so it's a mineral, and it helps to, bring, to build strong bones. Um, now, we looked at your diet. We've been looking at your diet, haven't we, Tania, to make sure that your diet is as optimal as possible to uh, provide you with the best nutrition. So what sort of nutrients have we been looking at? Do you remember? We were looking at was it iodine and zinc. That's right, yeah. And one of the vitamins, was it? Yeah. Yes, so we looked. So Julia, we, uh, you, I'm sure you remember because we looked at quite a few. Because your diet, yeah, yeah, most yeah. of us are deficient in these. It's not just you. It's actually, but most likely, people who can't have dairy tend to be deficient in iodine. And iodine we need for brain development. And unfortunately, it's only the soya Alpro One Plus milk that has iodine in. I like. I think the oat milk for Marks and Spencers, but you know, who, who, you know, there aren't many choices, but I'm sure the, the food industry are now aware that iodine is needed because the United Kingdom is the only country in Europe where salt isn't iodized. So that means we don't get enough iodine even through bread. So where I'm from in the world, our bread is iodized. So we are fine. So um, where did, do you remember where I said we get iodine from? Now, what was it? Was it um, fish? That's right. And do you remember what type of fish specifically? Uh, well, I don't know. No, I don't expect you. I'm putting you on the spot now. That's not fair of me, is it? <laughs> so it's haddock. So haddock is the best source of iodine, but also dairy products. But that's because the cow has been given a multivitamin supplement. Because iodine comes from the sea. So your diet was lacking iodine and it was lacking zinc, right? So zinc we get mainly from, from red meat, such as beef. But you have been having some of those zinc bars that I have done a YouTube video on. And you know how popular they are. I didn't know they would be that popular. Everyone's calling me, oh, we love the zinc bars. How did you get on with them? She likes them. She likes them with a little bit of dairy-free chocolate spread on the top. <laughs> Why not? Don't you think cocoa is enough Co chocolate? Well, I think, I think she has a little sweet tooth, you see. Little sweet tooth, this one. Yeah. yeah. See, now those zinc bars are really high in zinc because we put in some pumpkin, um, some pumpkin seeds and also cashew nuts. So I'm really happy that you, you're keen on those. And then we also talked about calcium because her diet was actually lacking a bit of calcium. So how yeah. have you increased your calcium, um, Talia? Um, we've been having more green vegetables. More green vegetables, more broccoli and things. And, and? more of your milk and your cheese. And which products do you use that are dairy-free, um, Julie? Cocoa. Cocoa. Cocoa, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what she prefers. Yeah, yeah. And it's not yeah. the organic version, is it? Because the organic versions don't have calcium in. Is the uh, I don't no, I don't think it is the organic one. I think it's just the original. Yeah. They are they've all been fortified, so that's very good. Yeah. Um and then there was another well, it's not a vitamin, it's a hormone. Which one was that that you were lacking? That helps to break, to also build healthy bones. I don't remember. So it's um so it comes from something that lights up the whole world. Sun. <laughs> there we go. Yes, vitamin D. So are you taking your supplement now of vitamin your vitamin D? We've ordered it. We just need to collect it. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah. Because we cannot absorb calcium without vitamin D. Uh, I very much believe that um the, the importance of calcium has has made us uh, become um 
we don't tend to look at the other <laughs> vitamins and minerals because everyone's so obsessed with calcium. Yeah. So much more. We need to give it an all rounded approach. So now your diet is not just dairy free. It's also meeting, you're meeting your nutritional requirements and that's what it's all about. Right? So well done, Talia. You're doing so well. And I'm so pleased we've connected. And your story is going to inspire other people because many people think that you outgrow an allergy to, to milk, but you don't. Some people stay allergic to milk, and that's okay. You can live with it. Because how, yeah. how do you feel? Does it affect you on a daily basis in terms of what people say and don't say? Do you ever feel left out? Yeah, sometimes I feel um, left out because... Some of my friends say it like it sounds weird what it's made out of and stuff. And they said it probably won't taste like. But one of my friends actually likes the chocolate because I let her try some. Oh, that's brilliant. And what did they say? Did they like it? Yeah. Yes, yes. See, now, and how does it make you feel when people don't understand it? Does it make you feel well, good? Um, sometimes it makes me feel like left out because I don't get what everybody else gets. Yes, yes. But you know what? We all have something with us because none, none of us are perfect. No one's normal, right? So everyone has something wrong with them, right? So it could be an allergy or it could be back problems or it could be you know it could be anything so it's all about embracing our um in, in uh, all our, our imperfect parts right all individual aren't we yes yeah yeah so thank you so much guys um so julia and talia are also on instagram and what's your instagram um page called uh, dairy free underscore curly kid curly kid so dairy free underscore curly kid and you do your you basically you can follow talia's story um on instagram and do you have a are you on facebook as well or is it mainly instagram you just use? instagram for now yeah really? so people can follow you and you do videos yourself as well on there don't you talia brilliant brilliant so you can show people you know on there what you eat and um all your dairy-free products and all your foods high in zinc and iodine and inspire other children your age because that's what they need. Right? So fantastic. Thank you so much, guys. Is there anything you want to say to the audience before we um, stop this video? I was saying to any other children out there who might have an allergy. If you have an allergy, then don't really care because you know you've got all the things for it don't care about what other people think you mean yeah, yeah. brilliant talia oh i might get you to to do that one for the advertisement of this interview because that's oh. right <laughs> so that's going to be the opening line okay everyone it's nishi here dietitian if you have any comments please comment below and um, for either myself or for julia and talia like or share this video uh, and uh, don't forget that um, you can ask me anything and um, we'll be here to help you so bye. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank bye. You.